Sir Kuno, can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family um, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier. Especially when your father's a fool. And your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickval Castle. But that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the Order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Well, nobles can be very devout sometimes. <laughs> Not my old man. He cursed like a tanner's hand. More than once, he threatened to take a whip to our parish priest. Anyway... My mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window, and I saw my mother there, in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings, and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there. Shrieking with laughter. Christ, that sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later... He offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near Akovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them, and that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But well, I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you can turn your hand to something, you would never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was. And I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce. And I rode to Colleen with the delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way. And it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking. And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper, since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the Burgers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head. And I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick. So he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. 
Indeed. I owe my life to Radzik, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time. And how could I refuse him? I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fella. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in... well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus! Oh, I. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, the pair of them. Reliable. As long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But, nobody's perfect. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching? For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. Well, what exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of. But wayfarers are sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course, he never said a word. When we were approaching Barzdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle, and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely. We just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Oh, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk? No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. What about Jakey? Jakey? That boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like a son? I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. The boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same, too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? Hmm, <laughs> true. Two is more than enough. Henry! What is it, Jakey? The stone wants to talk with you, if you can call it that. Probably about that ring. What ring? Ah, no one told you about it. The fellas call it the Ring of Bakus. It's a kind of game we play. Kuno gave us this ring. It's just a worthless bauble. But when we're at the tavern, Kuno pays everything for the man who has the ring. So we steal the ring from each other and try to trick each other. Well, actually, 
Just the others. They won't let me play. Kuno says I'm too young to get boozed up. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. But I don't have the ring, so why does the stone want to see me? He probably wants you to steal it from someone. Since you're new, the fellows will talk to you, and it won't be suspicious. All right. I'll have a word with him. Jakey sent me to you. Something about a ring? Mm-hmm. I suppose you want me to get it from someone? Mm-hmm. Who has it? <coughs> Jakey? Mm -mm. Jan Behrman? Mm -mm. I didn't quite... Is, is it fletching? Mm -mm. Does Dangler have it? Mm. All right. How should I get it? I got the ring from Dangler. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, uh, I suppose there's not much more either of us can say about it. Mm-mm. <coughs> uh, yeah, thanks to you too. <laughs> 